It's the 3rd of July, so get those USAs in the comment section for me. But as for what we're getting into in today's show, we got an interesting Michael Thomas injury update, and then Bleacher Report put out an article recently talking about some of their most underrated wide receivers going into the 2023 season. So I just wanted to react to that, share what Bleacher Report had to say, and give you guys my thoughts. But before we get to that, you guys need to do me, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to hit the sub button because we're trying to get to 16,000 subs before preseason starts. We're just a le few weeks out. We're not even two months away from real football. We're less than like 100 days from real football. So guys, help us get to 16,000 subscribers. And here's just a few reasons to subscribe. You get daily videos around the New Orleans Saints. We talk news, rumors, free agency, trades. During the draft, our draft coverage was second to none. You also get live game day coverage during the football season. We do watch parties almost every single week, so be sure to tune in for those. And then you get Saints content by Saints fans for Saints fans. So help us out. Subscribe. It's 100% free. And if that's not a good enough reason, I mean, check out this shirt. It's awesome. It's 4th of July. We, uh, Eve had to pull it out. But guys, hit that sub button. Let's talk Michael Thomas injury news. So offensive line coach Doug Marone provided a Michael Thomas injury update recently when he was asked from a reporter from 77 WABC, a sports radio station up in New York. And here's what Marone had to say. He said, I have not spent a lot of time with Michael. I knew him when he was getting recruited. When I was at Syracuse, we actually started recruiting him. We know when he's healthy and when he plays, he's a game changer. We saw that last year in just a couple of games that he played. He's working to get himself back where he needs to be. So just real quick reaction. I know I saw on Twitter a lot of people being like, oh, well, it sounds like he's not healthy. Oh, it sounds like he's not going to play. But what else would an offensive line coach say? Like, the offensive line coach isn't working with Michael Thomas every single day. Doug Marone is not getting reps and watching and focusing in on MT at training camp or at, at practices and at OTAs. I, I think it's just insane for people to look at this headline or look at the Michael Thomas injury from Doug, uh, update from Marone and be like, oh, well, it sounds like he's not okay. I mean, how else would an offensive line coach respond? But as for what this means... It's exactly what we've been told and exactly what we've been telling y'all. Michael Thomas will be ready to roll at training camp. The expectation is that he will be 100% ready to roll. He'll be at 100% speed and he will be ready to go for training camp, which starts here in just a couple of weeks. And I just wanted to throw these pictures in here. So on Michael Thomas's Instagram story, you can check these out. And I thought this was really cool. The first picture, I mean, it's just showing up all the way. Let's go 575, make him. Hey, or make him see you, uh, make me smile, or whatever it says. But 575 pounds. And then you see him doing the deadlift. I mean, he's lifting that weight. And I just want to ask you this. Does an injured guy deadlift 575 pounds? I mean, come on. Answer that question for me. No, he doesn't. And he also followed it up with this picture, which is black picture, white text. I think it says all you need to say. They was hating on 530 for one back in mid-April. So there's 575 for five. Go smoke that. He said, go smoke that kick guard Mike Pack because he's flexing. He's ready to go. But my point being, he's lifting a lot of weight. He's doing things to get healthy. He has been working. So if there's any Saints fans who are out there saying, Michael Thomas doesn't want to play. He isn't a guy who loves football. I think you're wrong. I think you're a moron. And I personally think that Michael Thomas is going to prove a lot of people wrong. Obviously, everything weighs in on the health. If he's not healthy, this whole operation, we can just go ahead and say, Michael Thomas, sorry about it. You're out of the black and gold. But he's healthy. We know what he can be. So, guys, if you think that Michael Thomas is going to prove some haters wrong just like me, get those haters and get those doubters to shut up by typing 13 in the comment section. Sound off. Get in the comment section. Type it as many times as you can to show Michael Thomas some love. So let's get into Bleacher Report because – I found this article really, really interesting. They mentioned a lot of really interesting names um, in, in this article, but Chris Olave was the first one that was listed in their most underrated wide receivers heading into the 2023 season. And I'm going to get into what Beecher Report said as well as my reaction. But before that, 
you know we got to plug the Chris Olave jerseys. We're talking about 12. We're talking about that guy. I mean, I swear Chris Olave is going to just pop off this year. And you don't want to be the guy who's at your Saints watch parties or down on Bourbon Street or on Canal watching the game and you're wearing like a dirty old Traquan Smith jersey or you're rocking your old, you know, Kirk Merritt or uh, or, or uh, <laughs> Yeah, Marquise Colston. I love Marquise Colston. He's a stud. He's a stud. I love him to death. He's a Saints legend. However, I think if you want to go and rep a great jersey, instead of a guy like Marquise Callaway, get 12's jersey. Chris Olave, we have the link for you, chatsports.com slash Saints jerseys. You can get that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. So let's get back to Chris Olave. I want to dive into his numbers real quick, and we've shown this graphic before, but I think that it just shows how talented of a player he can be. Just strictly based on the numbers. 119 uh, targets, 72 receptions, 1,042 yards. He's already a 1,000-yard uh, receiver proven in just 15 games. Because you remember, he missed some time due to that concussion. He had some injury issues. But four touchdowns, just uh, 14 and a half yards per catch. The guy's a stud, and he puts up numbers like nobody's business. And Bleacher Report, I think, hit the nail on the head here. They said, however, those numbers don't quite exemplify how efficient and effective Olave was last year. According to Pro Football Focus, the Ohio State product ranked seventh in the NFL in yards per route run. The fact that Olave accomplished all of this while playing with the underwhelming quarterback duo of Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston shouldn't be overlooked, nor should the fact that he'll now be playing with a four-time Pro Bowl quarterback, Derek Carr. Now, I do expect a big leap for Chris Olave, and I think that he has a lot of reasons as to why he can succeed this upcoming season. But I want to start off by just addressing the Derek Carr thing right here because I truly do believe Michael, or Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Taysom Hill, Rashid Shaheed, Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow, all of these guys, all of their success solely depends on whether or not Derek Carr can be a good fit. I believe in Derek Carr personally. I know a lot of people around uh, the world and around the NFL media scape don't necessarily believe in him, and I can understand why. I mean, he hasn't shown anything super crazy. He hasn't found a ton of playoff success. But what I will say is he is a definite upgrade from Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston, and I think if you can't sit here and agree with that, I just want you to go and watch some tape. But I want you guys to do me a favor. If you think Chris Olave will go crazy this year, I need you to hit that thumbs up icon. And don't jinx it. We're Saints fans. We believe in voodoo. We believe in gregories and all that nonsense. So hit the thumbs up icon so Chris Olave will go just absolutely bonkers and just go nuts this year in year two because I think he's going to go crazy and I'm going to hit my thumbs up icon right now. So why Olave will succeed? Here's five reasons. There's a hundred of them I could really list, but here's my top five. He has better quarterback play, just like Bleacher Report said. Derek Carr, unquestionably a upgrade over Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton. He has NFL experience now. He has true and he has real experience in high-pressure games, in high-pressure situations where he is a true wide receiver one. He has the experience and he has some reps under his belt, which I think means a lot and can really help him take that next step. He's also a proven young wide receiver. He's already a proven 1,000-yard receiver. He had averaged 14.5 yards per catch, four touchdowns on the year last year. Honestly, I think he could have gotten up to like six or eight if he had just caught, come down with some of those balls, had better passes thrown to him. Some of that's on him as a rookie. Some of that's on the quarterback play. But he's a proven young wide receiver. And I found this stat from PFF very interesting. He's 82.2 receiving grade versus zone coverage. He tears it up. Even if you want your favorite cornerback, your favorite safety to go and try and defend Chris Olave, he's still probably going to struggle. And he, this offseason, he focused on gaining muscle. He gains some muscle this offseason. He improved his contested catch, and that will allow him to be able to come down with more of those balls in, on a deep shot or on the sideline or over the middle where you might have seen him drop a lot of passes over last season. So I think that these are just a handful of reasons why Chris Olave succeed, and I truly do believe this down to my core. I think he could be a top 10 wide receiver if everything goes well. Again, there's a lot of things that he can't control, whether or not Chris, you know he's getting targeted from Derek Carr, whether or not DC4 stays healthy or even plays well. Like There's so many different things here that I think that need to be taken into account. But if things go correctly and things go smoothly for the New Orleans Saints, fingers crossed, 
I truly do believe Chris Olave can be a top 10 wide receiver. So before we get on out of here, before I let you guys enjoy your 4th of July weekend, I need you to share your thoughts on Chris Olave. Do you think that he's O for overrated, U for underrated, or P for properly rated? I think that he's a little, he's kind of like the UP right here. I don't think that he's overrated yet. He has a lot of fantasy value. He has a lot of team value in just terms of production and leadership in the, uh, in the locker room. I think that Chris Olave is a guy that has just been a little bit overlooked because the spotlight was on Garrett Wilson last year. So I want to hear from you guys, Houdat Nation. But as always, y'all stay golden. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Hope it's safe. I hope you guys have a good time with your friends and family. Don't, don't shoot off your fingers with fireworks, please. Just be safe. Run away from the fuse, and you know everything will be fine. But anyway, have a wonderful 4th of July. Houdat Nation, we'll catch you next time.